going on. Um, we have just a minute before our live stream starts, and I've noticed some young people have walked in since I made the announcement. So there's a table in the back corner here for any young folks who uh, would like, yes, I am looking right at you, Scarlett. It's got your name all over it. There's coloring stuff, there's Play-Doh, there's... So you feel free to head back there, you too, Mia, anybody else. Um, that's, and Mia, I think your water bottle is in the office. You are very welcome. I just want to be, that was the prelude? Okay, good. I want to make sure. Good morning. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers who are joining us today. May this be a special day for you filled with many blessings. We are so delighted that we once again are worship, a worshiping community that includes St. Paul's United Church in Estevan, Knox United in North Portal, and St. Martin's United in Saskatoon. So to everyone who is at St. Paul's in Estevan, everyone who's at St. Martin's in Saskatoon, and everyone who is joining us online today from wherever you are, welcome. We are blessed to be a community of faith together. A special welcome as well to Kyle Fader, who is the new, Uni you can stand up, Kyle, who's the new United Church Saskatoon and Area Youth Minister. <laughs> Kyle's going to be sharing a bit about that ministry later on today with us, and we are happy to have you here in worship with us, Kyle. My name is Jordan. I'm here at St. Martin's in Saskatoon with my colleague, Keith. We want to thank all of the volunteers who helped to make this service possible. Start with a special thank you to Linda, who is serving as the worship leader in St. Paul's this morning. Our music leaders are Aaron, Betty Lou, and the contemporary singers. Our tech crew are Jim, Laura, and Josh. And I think there's a handful of other tech folks back there. Uh, who in here in Saskatoon, and Diane is, is troubleshooting tech in Estevan today. If you're at St. Paul's, you were greeted by Barry, Bonnie, and Cameron. If you are at St. Martin's, you were greeted by Peter and Corrine. Our two scripture readers this morning are Linda in Estevan and Beth in Saskatoon. And Linda's also lighting the Christ candle at St. Paul's, and Kyle will be lighting the candles here at St. Martin's. Diane is bringing us change for change. So friends, it truly takes a village or two to raise a worship service. So throughout the service today, words that are on the screen in white are spoken by the worship leader. Words in yellow are spoken by everyone. 
So let us begin this time of worship as we always do by acknowledging the lands on which we are gathered. I give thanks for the dandelions dotting the ground with yellow, reminding us of the stubborn resilience of this land. And I give thanks to the first peoples of this land, the Nahewak, Nakawe, Nakoda, Lakota, Dene, and Métis peoples, who teach us how to live in harmony with this land that has been their home for countless generations. We acknowledge our responsibility to be faithful treaty partners, to live in right relationship with all living beings in this land, and to create a future where all can live together in peace and harmony. In this spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge that we are gathering for worship on the traditional lands of the First Nations and the homeland of the Métis. We are all treaty people bound by the understandings made in the agreements known as Treaty 2, Treaty 4, and Treaty 6. Christ is alive. May we let Christ's light shine in our lives. As an affirming congregation, we light this candle as a sign of our commitment to be a community that celebrates the particular gifts of people of all genders, races, abilities, and sexual orientations. As we light our peace candle this morning, we take a moment to hold in prayer the people of Ukraine and Sudan. May peace break out wherever war resides. Please remain seated as we sing together, Come Now, O God of Peace. Our call to worship this morning it's based on Acts chapter 2 verses 43 to 47 we are called to be the church awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles All who believed were together, and all had things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day, 
Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, God added to their number those who were being saved. Let us pray. Giver of life, as we worship together this morning, may our hearts be open to your guiding word. Through story, song, and silence, teach us to live our lives in a spirit of generosity. Today, we give special thanks for mothers and all who have been mother figures for us in our lives, offering nurture, guidance, and unconditional love. We praise you for the ways your care for us is shown through the mothering love of others. Amen. The hymn now is Come Touch Our Lives. Let us come before God in our prayer of confession, saying together, Greater God, we live in a world of bounty, but we live in a society that teaches us to hoard resources, often at the expense of others. Forgive us when we are blinded by our own wants and do not see the needs of others. Open our eyes to the needs of the world so we may give with generous hearts. Gracious God, hear our silent prayers as we confess those things that separate us from you and from each other. Hear the good news that God forgives you and God loves you. May you be comforted by God's generous forgiveness so that you may live out a spirit of generosity in your life. We celebrate the gifts of this grace as we sing.
This morning we're going to share the peace of Christ. We invite you to remain in your seats, to look around at the people near you as you share these words of peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Good morning. Uh, so, exciting bonus change for change. That doesn't happen very often. Exciting in one way and sad in another way. But we'll get to that. Uh, for any of you who uh, don't know what Change for Change is, once a month we uh, pick a project. Uh, usually the youth group chooses the project. And we have a jar at the back. And people can throw their loose change or whatever they want in the jar when they leave uh, to support the project for that month. Uh, normally we end in April, but we had a special request. Uh, so we've, we're doing a bonus Change for Change. Let me explain. Uh, Joy Center is a primary school for orphaned children in southwest Uganda that was established in 2004 by Maureen Tor, youngest daughter of Joy Kagira. Joy spent her life caring for vulnerable children, and Joy Center was set up in her honor to carry on this compassionate work. We have supported Joy's uh, house uh, formerly. Uh, we did a collection and uh, were allowed them to buy books for their school, and it was very appreciated. Recently, due to the Ugandan government's new ultra-repressive legislation targeting LGBTQ people, Joy Center has been receiving an unprecedented number of requests for shelter and support from LGBTQ folks who have fled their homes and communities in fear for their lives. The staff at the center are doing what they can to respond but the increased demand this places on their food and housing budget is taking a toll. Members of St. Martin's have a long history of supporting the important work that Joy Center does. This month, our Change for Change collection will go to Joy Center to help them respond to the urgent needs of internally displaced LGBTQ people in Uganda. So again, the jar is by the back door if you want to put your change in there. If you're at home and would like to donate, you can uh, e-transfer to the office and just mark on the uh, e-transfer that it's for change for change. Thank you very much. So the gospel reading today is from the gospel of Mark chapter 12, verses 41 to 44. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contrib contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This is testimony from our ancestors in faith. Thanks be to God. Okay, let us rise in body or in spirit as we sing together, We Are Pilgrims.
Our scripture reading comes from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 to 35, and chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. But a man named Ananias uh, with the consent of his wife, Sapphira, sold a piece of property. With his wife's knowledge, he kept back some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. Ananias, Peter asked, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, were not the proceeds at your disposal? How is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You did not lie to us, but to God. Now, when Ananias heard these words, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who heard of it. The young man came and wrapped up his body and then carried him out and buried him. After an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter said to her, Tell me whether you and your husband sold the land for such and such a price. And she said, Yes, that was the price. Then Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to put the Spirit of the Lord to the test? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Immediately, she fell down at his feet and died. When the young men came in, they found her dead. So they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear seized the whole church and all who heard these things. This is testimony from our ancestors in faith. Thanks be to God. Friends, let us pray. God, we pray that you will give us open hearts and minds and questioning spirits to wrestle from this perplexing text, the hopeful word that you have for us this day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Over the past few weeks, we've been exploring what it means to be called to be the church. By looking back at some of the stories of the early church and the description of the early church that's given to us in the second chapter of Acts. We've noted that the community began in a place of awe and wonder was drawn together into community and was challenged to expand their sense of who they are and who they are responsible for. Well, this week we observe how that community broke bread together with glad and generous hearts, and we consider how we might be called to do the same. Acts 2 shows us a picture of the early church where it says, day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts. Breaking bread, of course, is a description of a community eating together and sharing a meal. But by extension, it's also a symbol of all the resources that we share and the discerning that we do about our own needs and about what we can give. So when we break bread, we set aside some for us and some to share. Where we break that bread is a matter of discernment and a matter of faith. The story of Ananias and Sapphira may seem like an odd choice 
when talking about giving generously and sharing resources. Frankly, it seems like an odd choice of readings at any time. I don't know if you felt that way about it, but I certainly did. But don't worry. The point of this message and the point of this story I, is not that if you don't give enough, that God will strike you down. I genuinely do not believe that that is the point of the story. This story, however, is often told with the idea that God caused the deaths of Ananias and Sapphira as a kind of punishment for their deceptiveness. But the scripture doesn't actually say that. The scripture simply says they fell down and died. I would suggest that possibly the stress of hiding the wealth that they were hoarding and the shame of being found out as liars and hypocrites was enough to cause their hearts to fail, figuratively and perhaps literally. In any case, it seems that it was their dishonesty and lack of trust that led to their demise. So what does this tell us about living glad and generous lives? If Ananias and Sapphira had been more truthful, would they have met the same end? If they had been able to give what they could gladly, would the story have played out differently? Well, we don't know. Perhaps if they had joyfully and honestly given what they felt called to give, they would have lived. Perhaps not. But almost certain, almost certainly, it would have changed the way they lived their final moments. If they'd given generously rather than grudgingly, if they had gladly invested in their community until their very last days, whether that was a matter of minutes or years away, they would have been surrounded by a community that supported them in their final moments, returning gratitude and surrounding them with joy. Instead, their dishonesty put them at odds with their community. Giving gladly and generously is not about how much you give, but about the manner in which you give it. The widow in our gospel lesson this morning gave a tiny amount of money, but it took profound trust in God for her to make that offering, and Jesus singles her out for recognition because of this. Ananias and Sapphira gave a large sum out of their abundance, but did so deceitfully, and it cost them their lives. The first step to giving gladly and generously is evaluating what you have and discerning what you need. I would like to share with you this morning a story of a man who was actively aware of his own needs, and it allowed him to be a joyful and generous giver. This fellow was a little rough around the edges. He had lived a hard life and was seen as little different by people in his community. He regularly visited his old cub leader, and he was hired to cut the cub leader's lawn. He never came quite when he was expected, but the arrangement worked out well for both of them. And one week when he came to mow the lawn, he brought a loaf of bread with him. Someone had given it to him, knowing that he didn't have a lot of extra income. But the man knew that he wasn't going to be able to eat that whole loaf of bread before it went moldy. So he brought it to his old cub leader, who lived with his wife and two children and often had visitors stop by for lunch. His offering was a simple loaf of bread. But that probably only cost him a, it probably only cost a couple dollars. But the thought and care represented in the gift made it invaluable. It's important for us to regularly take a step back and evaluate what it is that we are giving to the church, to our communities, and to the people in our lives. It is just as important to take stock of the spirit with which we are serving God's people. So I have some questions for us to reflect on. First one is, are you at the church so often that you are feeling burnt out and becoming frustrated with all of your volunteer positions? Or... Are you looking to get more deeply involved and share your gifts? Where is that sitting with you? Are you struggling to make ends meet and maybe need to consider scaling back your financial givings? Or have you not changed the amounts that you give to charity in many years and you feel able to increase some of your donations? 
Maybe you have a particular skill that you enjoy, like knitting or crocheting, that you could use to knit prayer shawls or warm winter clothing for people in need. A place where your joy and the world's need meet. Maybe you have a passion for music with which you can praise God and worship. We have to add a few more chairs, but there's always room. Or perhaps you're going through a tough time right now. And you need to lean on your community of faith a little more than usual. Letting others know when we need support is one of the ways that we help our congregations to flourish and to become places of genuine mutual help and encouragement. We are all blessed by the unique skills, abilities, and resources that enrich our communities and our congregations when they are offered with gladness, with a, a sense of generosity, breaking bread gladly, discerning what we need and what we can give, is part of what it means to be called to be the church. When we all offer our time, talent, and treasure joyfully, we become the kind of community of faith exemplified by the early church that we read about in Acts. So friends, what is the Spirit calling you to do so that you and your community may enjoy the fullness of God's blessings?
In our giving and our receiving, we are blessed. In our wonderings and our seeking, we are blessed. In gratitude for all God's blessings, we offer our wonder, our time, our energy, and our resources for the sake of our neighbors near and far. Our offering is beautiful in God's sight. As the offering plates are brought forward, let us rise in body or in spirit to sing grateful. Generous God, you have given us so many wonderful gifts. May we be inspired by your generosity to serve your people and your creation. Amen. Hello, there we go. And I'm pleased to invite Kyle to come forward and offer some words about the Saskatoon Area Youth Ministry. Please be seated. All right, first things first, mic check. Can I get a thumbs up if you can hear me okay? Fantastic. Hello, everybody. I hope this day finds you in good health and good faith. If it's okay with you, I'd like to start things off with a little bit of a joke. <laughs> what do you call a seagull that lives by the bay? A bagel. <laughs> See, that's so much better. When I tell this stuff to the youth, all I get is groans and, oh, that joke's awful. <laughs> So to kind of formally introduce myself as me, my name is Kyle Fader, and I am privileged to have accepted the calling and the position of the Saskatoon and Area Youth Minister. With our youth ministry, we run kind of four times a month. We run mostly on Tuesdays, except for the second week of the month in which we run at Thursdays, and we alternate through St. Martin's, Mayfair, McClure, and St. Paul's United Churches, just to kind of get a chance to celebrate the diversity of locations within our various congregations in the Saskatoon and area cluster, as well as just kind of getting the opportunity for different youth to come to different places. I know for some that don't have their own transportation, if it's a little closer to home and within walking distance, it's great to have them out there. So as mentioned, this coming Tuesday, we are doing a movie night. So usually with our youth ministry here, uh, the age group we're kind of targeting is grades six to 12 youth. But we do have some all-ages events, this movie night being one of them. So if you're interested in watching a movie, having some good company, good times, and some delicious snacks, uh, I did say to dress cozy. You might be wondering what that means. Um, I may or may not have told my youth I'd be showing up in a pink bathrobe. So they have that to look forward to. Yeah. Outside of youth ministry, I do a little bit of uh, teaching within the Saskatoon Public and Prairie Spirit School Divisions as a sub. And not to brag, but I had a student this past week come up to me and say, and I quote, you're not going to believe this, that I was actually pretty cool. <laughs> so uh, I've been riding that compliment for the past like six days now. <laughs> but uh, feel free to uh, bring your youth out. We are excited to have everyone out there. If you have any questions, uh, my contact information is available kind of on the posters, or you can reach to Keith or Jordan here. I'm sure they'd be happy to have you reach out to me. I also have a Facebook page 
called the Saskatoon Area United Church Youth Ministry, in which I kind of post updates to events, as well as sharing information about kind of other congregational events there, so you can keep up to date with that. And I'm very happy to see everybody here, and thank you for being so welcoming today. I feel the love and the faith of God here today. Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. This morning, our prayers of the people are going to be shared between Linda in Estevan and myself. And following each verse, there's going to be a sung response. Please remain seated. The sung refrain is, there is room for all in more voices, number 62. So it's, there is room for all in the shadow of God's wings. There is room for all sheltered in God's love. And I, rejo and I rejoice and sing my refuge and my rock in whom I trust. There is room for all. There is room for all. room for the saint, room for the popular, and room for the outcast, room for the young and old, short and tall, room for all colors and gender expressions, sexual orientations, and creeds. There is, there is room for all, sheltered. In God's embrace, there is room for the whole and the broken, room for the stranger and the friend, room for the steadfast and sure, room for the curious and doubting, room for oppressor and oppressed. As we sing the refrain, let's sing it just once. There is room for all. In God's care and concern, there is room for our prayers. Prayers made in public, prayers made in private, prayers made of eloquent words, prayers made by the yearning of our hearts. There is room for prayers 
for those who have asked to be remembered by our communities of faith, Young So and Lincoln Richards, Maureen Jackew, the families of Erna Pullum, the family of Arlene Avery, and the family of Butch McLean. Murray, Esther, Frida, Walt, Jackie, Pat, Richard, Betty Ann, Jeff, Lil, Mary, Barb, Donna, Christine, Pat, Adrian, Mary, Mildred, Bonnie and Ralph, Ken and Pat, Maureen and Dale, Elaine and Ray, the Glenn family, Betty and the Schmidt family, and for all whom we pray now in the silence of our hearts. There's plenty of room in God's love for us all, plenty of room for our prayers. room for all. Let us pray. O oh God, may we be transformed by our prayers to make room in our lives for the needs, hopes, and dreams of all for whom we have prayed. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to say, to, who taught us to pray saying, Creator, our Father, our Father Mother, heaven, loving Parent in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever, forever and ever. Amen. Now let us sing from Voices United, number 468, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ.
Friends, go out into the world this week living out of a spirit of generosity. And may you be open to and blessed by the generosity of others. And may the blessing of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.